Rub up your engines! These what says, will new Siennas not last as long now they are hybrid only? Well, definitely that would be true. I had a customer years ago at a Toyota Highlander. Same kind of basic setups. It was front wheel drive only. He got 550,000 miles. It ran great. It's original engine transmission. Then he thought it's getting old. He went out and bought a hybrid Highlander. Gas engine in the front, but it had the electric hybrid drivetrain in the back. At 150 something thousand miles, the rear hybrid drive went out and he got rid of the vehicle because I told him it was going to cost him many thousands of dollars to fix it. So I'm assuming that they will not last as long, which is a shame because they were great vans. But that's the thing you have to understand about hybrids. They're not cheap to buy and they're not cheap to repair when they break. If you're the type of person that you don't care, you're going to buy a van and you're going to keep it for 150,000 miles and no more, probably it'll never break on you. But if you want to keep them forever, they won't last as long as the old ones. That's just common sense. Kevin Benavi says, Scotty, I'm buying a car today. I'd advise you to take more than one day to buy a car. <laughs> What's your opinion of a 2016 Hyundai Genesis 3.8 V6 with 50,000 miles? Powertrain warranty goes until 100,000 miles. Will that help? Well, yeah, well, help but here's the problem warranties are only good as the paper that they're printed on right the problem with those things is they age the engines wear but as long as it's running they're not going to warranty anything did a video back on a genesis and showed that a genesis with 100,000 miles all four cams were pretty much starting to wear out still ran okay but the cams are starting to wear out i did a lexus that had 180,000 miles on it cams weren't worn at all and these warranties only if it doesn't run or it runs like crap will they fix it. If it's still running, they go, oh, it runs good enough. We don't care. We're not going to fix it. Realize that. Now, with 50,000 miles, it's still got a lot of life. You can get a good price on it. Go right ahead. But I wouldn't go overboard with paying too much for used ones because they don't hold up like Lexuses or Acuras. They just don't. Henry Baber says, does anybody know if a V6 manual Mustang from 2014 to 2017 would be a good deal and reliable? Well, they're decent vehicles, especially with the standard transmission. But it depends on who is the original owner and how did they drive it. It's a standard transmission. If he was one of those guys that wants to do burnouts all the time, hooey, you're going to have problems with that thing. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But if it was taken care of, it could be a fun, reliable one. And since it's a V6, the prices on resale are a lot lower than the V8s. Everybody wants the V8s? Get a V6, might get a great deal on it. Carl Crenfield says, what's your opinion on a 2018 Kia Forte? I'm not a Kia fan because the quality isn't there. They're better than they used to be, but they're still not great. I see them burning oil. I see the transmissions burning out as they get older. Now, if you're talking about buying one, it's a three-year-old car. If you can get a good price and it's low mileage, it could still last a long time. They generally don't fall apart till they get over 100,000 miles on it. So if you could take advantage of some fool buying at full price and you get a good price, it could be a good knock-around vehicle. You always look at two things, price, mileage. If you can get a good price on a lower mileage one, that can still last, what the heck? Because you're never gonna find a good price on a 2018 Toyota, they're all overpriced. Get a good price, could be a good car. Tony Partridge says, should I lower my 2016 Mustang with a coilover kit, including camber plates for a more planted ride or leave it stock? Answer this question is, what do you want? If you wanna race around, yeah, sure, go ahead. But let's say you got a girlfriend or a wife, she's not gonna like it. She would like the original ride. I've taken my wife on various Mustangs. She loved the modern independent suspension ones. She absolutely hated the ones that had been lowered because they don't ride all that well. What do you want? You want a zooming around thing? Or do you want something that's more all round? That's your choice. Sylvia Alano says, hello, Scotty. Should I buy an 08 Volkswagen Polo 1.4 for 2,600 euros? It has 180,000 kilometers. Well, you're talking euros. Obviously, you live in Europe, right? A lot of people buy Volkswagens. They're very popular. Mechanics know how to fix them. You can get parts relatively cheaper. It could be an okay deal in Europe. The United States, no, the parts cost a bunch, they fall apart, the Volkswagen dealers charge way too much to fix them. But in Europe, that's really not a bad choice. I've got friends like in Ukraine, they love Volkswagens, they get parts for them, they get them cheap, there's a lot of junkyards with used parts. People drink a lot there and smash up the cars so they can get good low mileage engines and transmissions if they need them. If you're in Europe, could be okay. Juan says, my O2 Escalade needs an EBCM module replaced. If I replace it, do I need to bleed the whole system? Here's the thing, if you're just talking the electronic parts, no, but if you're talking about the actual ABS brake system module where the lines bolt in for the 
brake lines, all the steel lines, not just wires. Yes, you'd have to have a guy like me bleed out the air because you need a dealer level scan tool. It's, even then, it might take an hour. I got it and I hook it up and it tells you everything to do this, press this, now bleed these, then close it, then do this, then do this. Some of the things you got to do eight or ten times over before you get to the next stage. So if you have to open the lines, the brake fluid, the hydraulic lines and put them on, yes, you're going to have to get it done by a professional mechanic. You won't be able to do it yourself. Hal Soup says, no matter how carefully I drive, I hear an annoying whining sound coming from the passenger seat. Now, if you're talking about you're sitting in the passenger seat and you hear it, it could be a wheel bearing. But if you're actually in a car and you hear a whining noise coming from that seat, realize there's all kinds of sensors in cars today. Some of them weigh the passenger so the airbag fires the correct amount of pressure. If you get in an accident and doesn't chop somebody's head off, it could be that sensor. A lot of them have computer modules under the seat and that could be whining. What you want to do is go under the seat and pinpoint it. You can go get one of those mechanic stethoscopes at any discount auto parts store for about 15 bucks. Put it on your head and then check each thing to see what's whining. And if it's an unnecessary thing like some kind of a relay that's whining and you unplug it and everything works, you can just leave the stupid thing unplugged. You got to figure out what the whining noise is coming from. And if it is from under the seat, do that. If somebody else drives the car, if it only makes it when you're moving, and start checking with a little stethoscope. John Jackson says, Scotty, how often should the CVT fluid be changed in a 2020 Elantra? Book says it's lifetime, but I know that's a lie. Yes, CVT transmissions are very expensive to fix, they're very complex. That was mine, especially being an Elantra. I would change it every 30 to 40,000 miles. It's not hard to do, watch my videos. You just need a couple of tools and a little pump to pump the new fluid back in. I would only use the dealer fluid. I'd buy it at a dealer parts department. I would change it every 30 to 40,000 miles. Cost you maybe 50, 60 bucks to do it yourself. Those transmissions cost four or five thousand dollars or more to fix when they go. All fluid gets dirty all fluid wears out, then you're gonna have problems. And they say it's lifetime, ask them what the warranty of the transmission is, you know? If you break when the warranty's up, <clears throat> they're not gonna fix it for free, it's your money, so you might as well as maintain it. Grab Bag Entertainment said, my girlfriend Kylie wants to know what you would do for a living if not cars. Motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Triumph truck, so I was always a motorcycle guy since I was a teenager because when you're young, you don't have any money, you want speed. Cars are very expensive to get speed. I know guys that have fast cars. If you saw that video I had on the Toyota Supra that the guy turned into a single turbo in Tennessee that had 1,250 horsepower, that guy had like $130,000, $40,000 invested in the car. Hey, for five grand, you get a motorcycle that's super fast. Calvin McGuire says, my Tacoma says 10,000 miles between oil change. Thoughts, what should I do? Ask him what the warranty on the engine is. And when it goes out, if your engine gets dirty and wears, it's not until it's 100,000 miles or more, it's gonna show it the warranty's long gone. Realize two things. No matter what kind of oil you do, you still got to change your oil once a year. Always do that. Say, you only drive 3,000 miles a year. You still want to change it once a year. 10,000 miles, that's kind of pushing it. You know, a lot of guys, oh, the oil can take it. La, 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 la. I'd go five to seven myself. Oil's cheap. Engines are expensive. Do you really want to chance it? Now, on the odd chance that you're a maniac driver on a highway all the time. I had a customer who had one and he sold hunting dogs. It was in Texas. He thought nothing of getting his car driving to Detroit to deliver a hunting dog. He put 100,000 miles on his car the first year. In that case, sure, you could change it every 10 because it's all highway mileage. And highway mileage doesn't wear your engine that much. So if it's all highway mileage, you could get away with it. But if it's stop and go city driving, don't do it. You'll damage your engine in the long run. William says, 2017 Toyota RAV4. My phone keeps disconnecting from the Bluetooth while I'm on a call. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, all the stuff that they add on those cars, a lot of them do not mesh with different systems. Now, I'll tell you something that I found that works fine and you're watching me now on one. I gave up with Samsung because their phones were giving me problems, especially on the internet, talk to text, and I answer a lot of questions. You're watching me on a Google Pixel 4a 5G now. Maybe get yourself a Google Pixel and try. I have no problems with it. It's fantastic. Whenever I go anywhere, it works. Driving on the car, it's telling me where to go. It plays the music great. And then it just lowers the music while people are telling me stuff so I don't have to have it go down and then blare up. It automatically answers the phone all the time. You might try that first rather than switching your system because the problem is obviously a software problem. Try Google Pixel. If it works, hey, that's what I did. I, I had Samsung for decades. I loved them, but now I'm a Google Pixel man. Let me tell you, they don't pay me anything either. <laughs> I bought the phone, cost me 500 bucks, and that's the thing. My Samsung was 1200 The Google was 500 and it works better. And it actually takes better night pictures. I've been taking night pictures of the ocean. I got a friend who's a professional photographer. He's framed some of them for me. He says he's, he's amazed at how well it works at night. Jay Tron says, hey, Scotty, our Ford Transit customs were a 
reliable. Well, the Ford Transits are pretty reliable. Realize, if you do want to get a Ford Transit, take my advice. Buy the diesel version, don't buy the gasoline version. The diesel version is really strong, and you're up there always big on diesels, you know. They've been making diesel engines there a long time. You're much better off with a diesel engine in a Transit than a gasoline one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.